Chapter 3, Faster Than Light. Overgrown and full of little animals, Pirizuka Zirzek was close to being overtaken by the earth. Pirizuka walked outside and heard birds chirping and the gentle rustle of the wind in the trees. She turned back and saw India and Edmiron. She tried her best to speak to her about what happened, yet somehow India could understand every sniff and squeak Pirizuka let out. India spoke. Pirizuka, I don't think that the earth needs you. You have been searching for these idiotic things. India pointed at the Dutvutanian relic in her hands. Pirizuka held it close. Pirizuka sniffed. India laughed and patted Pirizuka on the shoulder. Things like these should not be sought after. After some time, Pirizuka looked down. She tried to remember. It is her job to get rid of Dutvutanian technology from Earth. Her Thilian instincts started to settle in. Pirizuka's brow scrunched down, and then she looked up at India with a sharp gaze. Pirizuka tried her best to convey her purpose as an overseer on Earth to India. Why she is here and what her job is. India, however, did not seem to care. She looked back at Pirizuka with a stare without any emotion in her face. India said, Well, as you wish to do, I don't care anyway, she said while walking away. Pirizuka quickly grabbed India's wrist. India darted her eyes and hissed back loudly. She smacked Pirizuka's hand away and stood there. She stared down Pirizuka for a bit and then continued on her way. She jumped down from Pirizuka Zerzik and walked away into the forest. Pirizuka was furious. She could not help but let out a hissing scream that echoed all over the island. She took the Dutvutanian relic and threw it into the floor of her Zerzik so hard it almost shattered the hull. She was clawing at her head eyes vibrating and limbs twitching. Pirizuka was at rock bottom. She wanted to tear everything apart. She grabbed the metal pieces of her zerzik and tore them off easily. She took one of her personal drones and threw it so hard into the forest, it split a tree in two. She was getting primal. A fire burned inside her. It was only getting stronger. She could see that her hands were fuming, glowing almost. A slight fear settled in. She was going to die. Her body was bursting into flames. She panicked and immediately ran to the ocean to quench the heat. She jumped in and a loud sizzle was heard. She was literally burning from the inside out. On the beach was a couple of human boys watching the alien spectacle. Pirizuka rose up from the water, her clothes charred and drooping over her steaming body. She walked up to the boys, sharp teeth showing and a belly roaring for food. They ran away. Pirizuka did not chase them down. She stood there with her inside, screaming in pain. She wanted to eat anything at this point. She ran back to her zerzek and found her pet bunny. She wrapped it up by the skin of its back. She opened her mouth and widened her throat, showing the insides of her extremely hungry stomach. It roared so loud, steam could be felt rushing through and out from her mouth. Pirizuka had her eyes wide open, looking at the bunny who was just hanging above her, awaiting its doom. After a long stare, Pirizuka clamped her mouth shut. She put the bunny back down into its pen. With all the frustration in her body slowly leaving, she was in a state of placid contemplation. She was a Thillian, after all. Born from Tig with the ability to think things through, Pirizuka sat down and calmed herself down. That Dutvatanian relic? Why did India give it to her? She immediately ran up and tried to find it. It was still stuck inside the sand that covered the top of her zerzek. She picked it up and inspected it. A strange thought went through her head. What if I attach this flat thing to the side of my zerzek? She brought it to the side. She reached down and slammed it onto its side. The relic immediately whirred into action. It rumbled with metallic noises and spread through the entire left side of her zerzek. It grew into some kind of appendage with a great black wing extending upwards. And then it settled back with its tip pointing back. It hissed louder and louder. It grew, and it kept growing into a sharp black wing that shook her entire zerzek. She immediately ran inside and closed the gate. Her zerzek was shaking free from the overgrowth. It rose from the ground, and then the wing turned it around and slowly pushed it outside from the forest to the beach and beyond the waters. It snapped into motion. Her zerzek was traveling faster than the speed of sound and eventually faster than the speed of light.